Hello future doctors welcome to the painism i am dr dipen shah and today from the master of biology we are going to discuss about the master endocrine gland and in my last video we discussed about the structure and location of the pituitary gland and in today's segment we are going to discuss the most important part that is the hormones and the functioning of the pituitary gland so let us begin with the discussion about the functions now first part we are going to discuss about the anterior pituitary functions so the hormones of pars distalis are mainly six major hormones and these hormones are basically going to control various different body structures hence all the hormones name will contain a word tropic so these are considered as tropic hormones because they are going to act on the distant target organ in each hormone i am going to discuss three major aspects the first aspect is how this pituitary hormone is being controlled by hypothalamus the second aspect is about the role of that particular pituitary hormone and the third aspect if there is deficiency or there is excess of a particular pituitary hormone what disorders are caused so let us begin with the first hormone of the pars distalis that is known as the sth sth also known as the somatotropic hormone so yahan pe word aa gaya tropic because it is going to act on a distant organs and somatic means body structures so ye hormone act karega on the body structures in fact iska bahut hi famous name jo hai that is gh or growth hormone so we are starting with the discussion about the growth hormone now first is the how it is being controlled now growth hormone is mainly controlled by hypothalamus through certain factors which are known as ghrf and ghif ghrf is known as growth hormone releasing factor so whenever anterior pituitary will receive ghrf growth hormone is going to be secreted the other is ghif which means growth hormone inhibiting factor so when hypothalamus produces ghif pituitary will stop the secretion of growth hormone so basically it is the hypothalamus and pituitary coordination which helps in regulating the growth of a organism now ghif is also known as somatostatin so remember this terminology for your entrance exam also now let us discuss about the role of growth hormone now as the word suggests it is going to help in growth so growth hormone promotes growth of the entire body and specifically it helps in increase of the length of the long bones by more uptake of calcium also it helps to increase the muscle size and it also helps in protein synthesis so these are all the anabolic events that is being promoted by the growth hormone also growth hormone promotes lipolysis that is breakdown of lipids so lipids are broken down and that results in formation of fatty acids so basically it is a lipolytic hormone also growth hormone is considered to increase the glucose level in the blood hence we call growth hormone as a diabetogenic hormone remember that it is not causing diabetes but it is acting as if it is creating a diabetes like situation where the blood glucose level is rising so it is considered as a diabetogenic hormone so mainly the role involves the major growth of the body structures now coming to the third part of the growth hormone that is the disorders which may occur whenever it is deficient or in excess so hyposecretion of growth hormone in children results in a condition which is known as dwarfism and in this dwarfism there is mainly physical retardation where height does not increase these dwarfs are also known as midgets this dwarfism can be of two types the two different categories has been classified depending on various other syndromes and symptoms which are observed one type of dwarf have been considered as a frolic dwarf wherein the frolic dwarfs are mentally abnormal so there is mental retardation as well the other kind of dwarfs are known as the lorraine dwarfs wherein they are mentally normal but there is only physical retardation
so this we have discussed about the first anterior pituitary hormone that is the growth hormone coming to the next hormone that is called as tsh that is thyroid stimulating hormone also known as thyrotropins so yahan pe bhi word aa gaya tropic so from the name itself it is obvious that it is going to control the thyroid gland now tsh is mainly controlled by the hypothalamic hormone trf that is thyrotropin releasing factor tsh is also controlled by a negative feedback mechanism based on the thyroxin levels in the blood so if thyroxin levels in the blood are very high then tsh is inhibited but if the thyroxin levels in the blood are low tsh is stimulated and there is more secretion so this we considered as the negative feedback mechanism now tsh the major role of tsh is it is going to stimulate the thyroid gland so what does it stimulate it for it stimulates the thyroid gland to increase the uptake of iodine and since there is more uptake of iodine there will be more secretion and synthesis of thyroxin hormone because thyroxin consists of iodine as one of its major ingredient so that is the major role of tsh to stimulate the thyroid gland if there is hyposecretion of tsh then thyroid gland will not be stimulated and the result of this is going to be shrinking of the thyroid gland known as thyroid atrophy coming to the next hormone of the pars distalis is acth that is adrenocorticotropic hormone so yahan pe bhi word aa gaya tropic and it is going to act on the adrenal gland cortex part also known as corticotropins this hormone is again controlled by hypothalamic hormone that is known as crf that is corticotropin releasing factor now acth is going to stimulate the adrenal cortex part and on the adrenal cortex it will stimulate them to secrete the corticosteroid hormones like there are glucocorticoids there are mineralocorticoids and there are androgenic steroids so that is the major role of the acth on the adrenal cortex if there is deficiency or hyposecretion of acth it results in a condition known as addison's disease and if there is hypersecretion of acth it results in a condition called as cushing's disease moving to the fourth hormone which is known as pl that is prolactin also known as luteotropic hormone now prolactin has been called by different names as well it is called as mammotropins it is also known as lactogenic hormone it is also known as luteotropic hormone the reason for that is it has different type of functioning but it mainly acts on the mammary glands so during pregnancy the prolactin or mammotropins helps in the development of mammary glands also it stimulates milk secretion hence it is also known as the lactogenic hormone also it helps to maintain corpus luteum in the ovary and corpus luteum is the one which secretes the progesterone hence it is also known as the luteotropic hormone also an important functioning of prolactin which has to be noted is prolactin is inhibiting pregnancy during the lactation period so even the body does not allow immediate second pregnancy once the first child is born so that the first child is sufficiently developed and then it is allowing the body to go for the second pregnancy so prolactin inhibits pregnancy during the lactation period the next hormone is known as the gonadotropic hormone that is gth now in fact the gonadotropic hormone is consisting of two major hormones and they are controlled by hypothalamic hormone that is known as gnrf and gnif that is gonadotropin releasing factors and gonadotropin inhibiting factors the first part of gonadotropic hormone is known as fsh and the second part is the lh fsh is follicle stimulating hormone and lh stands for luteinizing hormone these both the hormones are going to act on the gonads so gonads are the primary sex organs in males they are the testis and in females they are the ovaries so basically fsh and lh shows the action on the gonads now fsh when it acts on the testis it basically stimulates the cuboidal germinal epithelial cells which are lining the seminiferous tubules and based on the stimulation it causes spermatogenesis in males 
So there are different stages of sperm cells that are formed and finally the mature sperm cells are formed in action of FSH. Similarly, in females, FSH stimulates the germinal epithelial cells and that results in formation of ovum and that process is called as oogenesis. But also, in females, FSH stimulates the development of different follicles and finally, a mature follicle is formed known as the graphene follicle. And inside the graphene follicle, the ovum is being developed by the process of oogenesis. A very important point to be noted is the follicular cells they secrete a particular hormone known as estrogen and this estrogen controls secondary sexual characters in females so remember that it is because of the fsh that the follicle was formed and from the follicle estrogen was secreted so estrogen is being controlled by the fsh so if there is deficiency of fsh in males spermatogenesis will be inhibited and in females oogenesis will be inhibited so, deficiency of FSH will result in infertility in both the sexes. Moving to the next part is the LH that is the luteinizing hormone. So, luteinizing hormone in males stimulates the Leydig cells in the testis and Leydig cells are also known as interstitial cells. Hence, LH is also known as ICSH in males that is interstitial cell stimulating hormone. And Leydig cells on being stimulated secrete the hormone testosterone which stimulates secondary sexual characters in males. Now in females the role of LH is very important. LH causes the rupture of the graphene follicle and that helps in release of the ovum and this process of rupturing of the follicle and release of ovum is known as ovulation. So this ovulation activity is a very important event which occurs during the menstrual cycle. Now, the important point to be noted is once the graphene follicle is ruptured, it results in the development of another follicle which is known as corpus luteum and this corpus luteum secretes progesterone and this progesterone is considered as the pregnancy hormone because it maintains the uterine lining. So uterine endometrium is its thickness is mainly maintained by the progesterone. So deficiency of LH in males will not allow the testosterone secretion and that will be resulting in deficient secondary sexual characters. Similarly in females if LH is deficient it will not allow the ovulation process, it will not allow the corpus luteum to be developed and the pregnancy hormone will not be secreted. So this we have discussed six major hormones of the anterior pituitary. So in my next segment we are going to discuss about the hormones of the posterior pituitary. So stay tuned for my next video. That's all from the painism.